ba maro dano ma karo jami ma ero kere leboni piano meo tuero melo chi kum jami juchu pi ma ma enti kweri kumwa hallelujah luani morin taste to the mass record this is a blessing that you own the beat Second session is uh, Job Lazarus uh, Okello. He is uh, going to be addressing us on youth and education. So I want speakers in the second session to introduce themselves because I want them to tell us who really they are so that we hear well from them. You are welcome, Job Lazarus Okello. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here today. And I'm so happy to be part of this wonderful summit. My name is Job Lazarus Okello. I am a master's student at Egypt Japan University of Science and Technology. And I'm a researcher in microchips. I'm researching on how to produce microchips. I am also a writer. I'm a speaker. I'm involved in a number of things in the world. For the purpose of this summit, I'm going to be focusing on education. I have a very interesting uh, topic. I believe you will learn a lot from this session. I want to begin with a question which I don't want you to answer. You don't have to answer this question. Just think about it. What can you do with your education? That's a question. Don't answer it. Just think about it. It was Albert Einstein who once made a statement that everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. 
What can you do with your education? What can you achieve with your education? What position do you occupy in life with your education? Is your education really helping you to achieve your targets? What targets do you want to achieve? What kind of education do you need to achieve those targets? What are you aiming at? What are you struggling for every day? In life, when you aim at nothing, you will always get it. Where are you going with your life? Where do you see yourself in the next 5, 10, 15 or so years? To achieve your targets, the best place to start from is right where you are with what you have. The question is, where are you in life? What do you have where you are? Not many people understand where exactly they are in life. That's why they cannot know what they need to do to get where they want to be. What are you doing with what you have where you are? Always take the right steps with the right mindset, in the right direction, at the right time, with the right people. Along the way, learn whatever will help you to achieve what you want. What have you learned in your life's journey? What skills do you have? What knowledge do you have? What formal and informal education have you received? And what have you done with the education you have received? Quality education produces problem solvers. What problems have you identified with your education? And what solutions are you providing to those problems? If you cannot identify and solve any problem, then you are not educated yet. Don't forget this statement. If you cannot identify problems and solve them, then you are not yet educated. How useful you are to humanity depends on the problem you solve. You will never thrive in any setting if you cannot identify problems and solve them. The world is looking for those who can identify problems and create solutions to the problems. What kind of problems have you identified in the world? What solutions are you creating to those problems? The solutions you provide determine how useful you are to humanity. Any education that does not make you identify problems and solve them is no education at all. It is miseducation. Miseducation prepares learners for a world that does not exist. We need the education that rewires our brains. Any education that does not change our mindset is not education at all. At best, it is miseducation, mistaken to be education. Miseducation is no education at all. The education that does not transform our minds is just a shadow of education. Be careful not to be miseducated. Because of miseducation, many people have been in mental slavery for a long time. Fortunately, education can set them free. Education can set anyone free from any kind of mental slavery. Bob Marley sang in his redemption song that emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Any education, whether formal or informal, that does not make us emancipate ourselves from mental slavery is no education at all. It is miseducation. Man shall never know true freedom without education. In the words of Epictetus, only the educated are free. In life, one is free only when they are free in the mind. Your mind is like a computer. You can download and install in it many kinds of software. You can also uninstall the installed software, even though some kinds of software are so damaging that even if you uninstall them, they will have caused a lot of damage to your mind. What are you downloading into your mind every day? Which kinds of software have you installed in your mind? Which kinds of software do you need to uninstall from your mind to get what you want? What do you allow to enter your mind? What kinds of people have access to your mind? Who is in charge of your mind? Just like the computer, the mind operates on the garbage in, garbage out principle. What enters your mind determines what comes out of it. If you put garbage into your mind, you will get garbage out of it. If you put something useful into your mind, you will surely get something useful out of it. What enters your mind determines what comes out of it. In life, you reap exactly what you sow. The question is, what seeds have you sown in your life? What seeds have other people sown in your life? If you look at your life carefully, what plants are growing in your life? The seeds sown in your life determine the fruits you will reap out of your life. What fruits are you reaping in your life right now? If you don't like the fruits you are reaping in your life right now, 
then you need to change the seeds sown in your life. Amazingly, in life, everyone wants to reap good fruits. But not everyone ensures that the right seeds are sown in their lives. The wrong seeds cannot bring forth good fruits. This is common knowledge. If you want to reap good fruits, then you must sow good seeds in your life. This is common knowledge. However, many people lack it. Sometimes all you need to do is change your environment or the people whom you are shared with. The people you are shared with surely plant many seeds in your life. The right people sow the right seeds, while the wrong people sow the wrong seeds. You can always tell how good someone is by looking at the kind of fruits you reap from the seeds they sow in your life. As long as you are learning something from someone, they are sowing seeds in your life. Your environment determines whether you will be successful or not. Be in the right environment so that the right seeds are sown in your life. If the environment for exploiting your potential, gifts and talents does not exist where you are, you should change the environment. You can change the people around you. You have to be around people who can build you so that you can grow. Do not be around people who cannot build you for they will destroy you. Always examine your life thoroughly. Because in the words of the great Greek philosopher Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. Who then are the people in your life? Who are those you call your very close friends? You are surely learning something from those people every day, whether you like it or not. Do you really know the kinds of seeds that are sowing in your life? Some people don't deserve to be in your life because they retard your progress. Be careful with the people you allow into your life. Look for those who can bring out the best in you. Whether you like it or not, you learn a lot from the people who are in your life. And you are fully responsible for the kinds of people you allow into your life. Therefore, blame no one for the people in your life. To change your environment, you can also change the kinds of books you read, songs you listen to, as well as what you watch. You can study and learn the right skills and knowledge. Those are your responsibility. In life, no one will ever learn for you. You must know the kind of knowledge you need and then seek it. That is why it is very important to know what you want so that you know the kind of knowledge to seek, when to seek it as well as where to seek it from. Because not everybody will teach you the right knowledge. What are you learning at the moment? What books are you reading? What are you watching? What songs are you listening to? What kinds of materials do you have in your library? Whether you like it or not, what you watch, listen to and read shape your life. You cannot be in control of your life if you are not in control of what you are watching, reading, and listening to. Choose wisely what you read, watch, and listen to. What you learn determines what you become. If you don't like what you are becoming, then change what you are learning. Always be conscious of what you learn because it determines what you will become. If you are not in charge of what you are learning, then you cannot be in charge of what you will become. Choose carefully, young people what you must learn so that you are in charge of what you will become. In life, we can choose our actions, but not their consequences, because the consequences are inbuilt in the actions. In this information age, no one has any right to be ignorant. I repeat, in this information age, nobody has any right to be ignorant, because where information is readily available, ignorance is a choice. The great Jamaican political activist and orator Marcus Garvey said, Remove yourself as far as possible from ignorance and seek as far as possible to be intelligent. He was a wise man. Today, information is really available. You can access information that you want from the comfort of your home. The problem is many people do not filter the available information because they don't know exactly what they want as well as the kind of information to look for. As a result, they consume information that destroys their lives. In this information age, information is available, but it is your responsibility to filter it so that you consume only what builds your life. Many people get destroyed today because they consume poisonous information. Not every information that is available can be useful to you. Not every information that is available will help you. Therefore, you must know what you want for your life so that you know what you don't want and therefore go for only what you want. If you don't know what you want, you will not know the kind of information to look for. Where purpose is either unknown or unclear, abuse is inevitable. Why must one receive both formal and informal education? Why do we go to school in the first place? You see, many people don't understand why they go to school. The why for which you go to school determines what you will do 
at school as well as how you will come out of it. If you know why you go to school, you will know how to spend your time at school and how to make use of the facilities and the people at school. As a result, you will come out when you are ready to serve humanity in various capacities. Today, many people cry about the unemployment crisis that is rocking the world. But before you cry about unemployment, you need to ask yourself this very important question. Are you really employable? What kind of skills and knowledge do you have? What can you do with your education? When you ask university graduates this simple question, what can you do? You will be amazed by how they struggle to answer the question. Only a few can answer that question concisely and precisely. If you cannot answer that question precisely and concisely, then you are not educated, no matter how many papers you have. If you cannot define what you can do with your education, then you are not educated. You have papers that show that you only pass through school. You can pass through school without being educated. That's a problem with many people. Be careful not to pass through school without getting educated. If you don't have the necessary skills to perform a job, then you are not employable because you cannot do the job. No employer can entertain anyone who is not employable. No employer can employ whoever cannot do the job. No employer can employ anyone who is not properly prepared to do the job. The more skills and knowledge you have, the more employable you are. Now the question is, how employable are you? What can you do with your education? What kind of education have you received, both formally and informally? Are you sure you have received quality education? Quality education activates in learners the right skills that they can offer to the labor market. The skills market them and make them employable. The skills further open doors to many opportunities for them to always be employable Make every effort to learn as many of the following skills as possible. These are skills that will make you relevant to humanity forever. The first one, digital skills, professionalism, ethics, languages, governance and diplomacy, international relations, business development, entrepreneurship, organizational skills, intelligence skills, financial literacy, technical skills, research, mobilization, fundraising, Volunteering, community service, vocational skills, social skills, writing skills, networking skills, flexibility and accountability skills, critical thinking, data analysis, emotional intelligence, creativity skills, innovation, technology use and development, personal development skills, development and management, public speaking, self-discovery, self-awareness, personal branding, failure and success management. Leadership discovery and development, crisis management, talent and gift discovery, self-control, people management, team building. You need these skills to be relevant to any employer. Social intelligence, problem solving skills, interpersonal skills, time management, paying attention to details, interpersonal skills, work ethics, communication, teamwork, marketing, coding or software skills, computer skills, negotiation skills and many others. Do your best to learn these skills. They'll make you relevant in any setting, in any part of the world. These skills will help you for your entire lifetime. They can best be mastered through practical experiences, not just theory. There is no mastery without apprenticeship. Every professional was once an amateur, and every amateur has the potential to become a professional. Professionals must mentor amateurs without despising them. And amateurs should pay the price to become professionals. The world is looking for professionals. The world will never ignore you as long as you are a professional in what you do. Amateurs should submit to professionals and learn as much as they can. You cannot become a professional without learning from other people. The lack of transferable and competency-based skills today prevents many people from getting employed as well as keeping employed. Getting employed is one thing, but keeping employed is another thing. Without the necessary skills, the transition from school to work is a serious hurdle. You see, your academic papers can get you employed, but your skills and knowledge, as well as how you apply them, determine whether you will keep employed or not. When the demand for skills meets skills availability after skills acquisition and activation, the transition from school to work is a roller coaster experience. Education that is full of not memorization and cramming to pass examinations Instead of discovering, exploring, and understanding to apply the concepts in real life, we never address 
the problems we face today. Such education will limit your ability to apply creativity, imagination, and innovation. Such education makes learners unemployable. Such education is not sustainable. Such education is not useful at all. In fact, it is not education at all. Learners should collaborate to creatively and innovatively solve problems after identifying them. Technical and vocational education and training should be encouraged because it bridges the gap between learning skills and workplace demands. There are skills you cannot acquire in school. You need to go an extra mile and learn those skills. Quality education is value and virtue based. It instills in learners powerful values and virtues like ethics, character, discipline, integrity, excellence, respect, empathy, honesty, and humility. Now, these values are necessary to make people successfully execute their activities. The question then is, what values and virtues has your education instilled in you? What are the principles that guide your life? What do you stand for? If you don't have values and virtues that you stand for, then you are not educated yet. Without the right values and virtues, you are very dangerous to humanity. People who lack proper values and virtues are very destructive to humanity, while those with proper values and virtues are very constructive. One of the greatest thinkers of all time was an Egyptian called Tahotep. He wrote a book which I recommend that you read. The book is called The Maxims of Tahotep. In the book he said, do not be arrogant because of your knowledge, but confer with the ignorant man as with the knowledgeable. For knowledge has no limits and none has achieved perfection in it. There is no wisdom in being proud because of your knowledge and wisdom. You can be a professional in one area but a complete amateur in another area. Pride is a sign of little knowledge and wisdom. For those who are really wise and knowledgeable are very humble. Knowledge humbles the knowledgeable. Wisdom humbles the wise. Foolishness makes the foolish proud. Ignorance makes the ignorant proud. He is wise and knowledgeable who is not proud because of his wisdom and knowledge, but he is foolish and ignorant who is proud because of his wisdom and knowledge. How humble are you? Do you despise other people because you are educated or treat them well because of your knowledge and wisdom? What are you doing with your knowledge and wisdom? How are you serving humanity with your education? How do you treat other people with your knowledge and wisdom? How do you handle those who are not as educated as you are? I love what Dr. Adam Rogers taught, that knowledge is proud, that it knows so much. Wisdom is humble, that it knows so little. Humility is a mark of an educated mind. While pride is a mark of an uneducated mind. To the young people, this is my advice to you. Prepare for life after school while still at school. Don't wait to first get out of school and then start thinking of what to do. It will then be too late. Remember, if you fail to plan, then you will have planned to fail. Preparing for life after school while still at school is planning to succeed after school. In life, don't wait for opportunities to find you. Go for them. We have young people today who are waiting for opportunities. That's a problem. Go after the opportunities you want. Your future is in your hands. Your destiny is in your hands. Your prosperity is in your hands. Run after your destiny with all your might. Pursue your future with all your might. Strive for your prosperity with all your might. Since the world is now a global village, we must become global citizens. Quality education makes one a global citizen. The whole world is yours to explore. Do not limit yourself to only a small part of it. However, prepare well for the exploration before launching out. Quality education prepares you to explore the world and serve humanity in any part of the world. The world is a stage for us to act on. Life is the show on the stage. Everyone has a position on the stage as well as a role to play during the show. No one will occupy your position and play your role for you because everyone has their own position to occupy and role to play. The show time is defined for everyone. No one acts forever. Your show time is your lifetime. Occupy your position on the stage and maximize your show time by acting with all your might. At the end of your show time, you will then exit the stage, leaving on it footprints that will never be erased from history. We cannot erase the footprints of Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr. We know what they did. How are you acting on the stage called the world? Have you taken your place on the stage? What are you doing on the stage? How are you performing on the show? Do you know your role? Are you playing it? It's upon you to decide what to do while on the stage during the show. The whole world is your stage. Don't limit yourself to only your country. 
If you cannot think and act beyond your country, then you will never see the opportunities that lie beyond it. There may be no opportunity where you are, yet there will be many opportunities in other parts of the world. Be open-minded so that you can see the available opportunities in different areas and then tap them. I was born in Gulu, northern Uganda, but for the world, I was not born for only the people of Gulu. I have worked to do in different parts of the world. Therefore, I think and act globally. I don't think only locally, for I have to serve humanity globally. You cannot serve humanity globally while thinking and acting only locally. You cannot go global with a local mindset. What kind of mindset do you have? How do you think and act? How do you look at the world? How do you view people from far parts of the world? Education makes you a global citizen. Do not reduce yourself to only a citizen of your country. You are more than just a citizen of your country. There are opportunities for you to tap in other parts of the world. Some people are so narrow-minded that they cannot think and act beyond their tribes. Come on. They are very tribalistic. It's a problem. That's unfortunate. Tribalism is a mark of an uneducated mind. Educated people do not leave themselves to only their tribes. If you cannot think and act beyond your tribe, then no matter how many papers you have, you are not educated yet. You are miseducated. The former Senate President of Nigeria, the great Dr. Chuba Wilberforce Okadigbo, was right when he said, if you are emotionally attached to your tribe, religion, or political leaning, to the point that truth and justice become secondary considerations, your education is useless. Your exposure is useless. If you cannot reason beyond petty sentiments, you are a liability to mankind. I love this statement. Education prepares you to serve humanity, not only your tribe mates or country mates. I am a global citizen. As such, my tribe is humanity. I was born to serve humanity, not only my tribe mates. How do you look at the world? Have you reduced yourself to only a citizen of your country? Do you consider yourself to be a global citizen or only a citizen of your country? What has your education done to your mind? Do you serve people equally or give preference to your tribe mates or country mates? Truly educated people have a strong sense of responsibility to humanity. They are not discriminative. Do you have a strong sense of responsibility to humanity? How responsible are you? What will you do for humanity with your education? What should humanity expect from you? We need young people who are responsible enough to serve humanity. Can humanity count on you, young people? Are you an asset or a liability to humanity? As a young boy growing up in Gulu, Uganda, I attended Gulu Primary School. And the motto of the school says, enter to learn, depart to serve. You see, we learn so that we can serve humanity. If you cannot serve humanity with your knowledge and wisdom, then you are not educated yet. You are miseducated. Today, the world is full of many miseducated people masquerading as educated people. They have great papers. However, they are doing a great disservice to humanity because they are not educated. Having papers does not necessarily mean you are educated. It is not your papers that show that you are educated, but what you do with what you have learned. What are you doing with what you have learned? I want you to understand that if you want to know how educated somebody is, look at how they live in the community. If they can serve other people with their knowledge and wisdom, then they are educated. Otherwise, they are either uneducated or miseducated. Always pursue your education with all your might. Education is a lifelong process. It does not end when you finish formal education. Unfortunately, many people stop seeking knowledge the moment they finish formal schooling. Never be one of those people. Seek the right knowledge and apply the knowledge correctly to solve problems. Humanity will take care of you as long as you can identify problems and solve them. As long as you can identify problems and create solutions to them, you will thrive in any part of the world, in any setting, and in any circumstance. Get educated as much as you can. Do not learn only superficially. Superficial education is no education at all. We live in a world full of average people. And average people learn and do things superficially. As a result, they don't achieve much. Never be average in whatever you do. Never learn averagely. Never do things averagely. If you do things averagely, you will get average results. No serious person wants average results. Many people want great results, but they operate averagely. That's a problem. Never expect great results if you're not willing to act beyond average. Great results are attained by those who learn, think, and do beyond average. Do you learn, think, and do beyond average? The great Greek philosopher Epictetus wisely said, It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. In life, the more you learn, the more you realize you know so little and the more you need to learn more. No one knows everything about anything. If you feel you know everything about something, then you know nothing at all about it. We must seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave if we must always identify and solve problems that the world faces. And that requires deep learning. I want to close with the words of the great English poet, Alexander Pope, who wisely wrote that a little learning is a dangerous thing. 
Drink deep or test not the parent spring. There are shallow dots intoxicated brain and drinking largely suffers us again. Will you drink deep or shallow the parent spring? Thank you very much. Actually, it is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I must say I'm, I'm humbled to be part of this uh, webinar. Besides moderating and all that, uh, what I'm going to take back home, uh, what I'm going to carry back home at the end of the session is great. I'm just so overwhelmed. You know, sometimes after listening to such speeches, you feel like moving out and building the world, becoming the, <laughs> you get it. But um, anyway, um, as we all know, planning is a must, okay? And we must act. Um, as best on uh, Lazarus's submission, I think one thing we should go back home with is we are in the information era. So it's up to you drink shallow or drink little knowledge or have uh, enough knowledge because everything that we have is at our fingertips so we have the key to success and everything i must say this webinar has been a great one and I'm so humbled to, to to be moderating such a, a powerful uh, event. Uh, a lot, very many people wanted to do this, but I'm so humbled. At this time, I don't know what to say. Maybe, uh, Lazarus, let me read uh, this real chap chap. Okay, let you free. Thank you so much, Job Lazarus. That was really wonderful and inspiring. It was exceptionally inspiring. Then Avita's, wow, very powerful. Wilfred Johnson, amazing speech. Jackie, Job, that was such a brilliant presentation. Thank you. Taroy, wonderful presentation. Job, thanks. Guys, can we make this platform at least on monthly basis? Oh my Jesus Christ. I don't know if this event was physical. I'm quite sure that some people would just run off stage and give uh, Lazarus handshakes, hugs, photos, selfies.